Are the lips too dramatic? <laughs> Maybe. This is a dramatic video. Strap in. So what is up? We are going to talk about products I really didn't like. I love doing this kind of video. I The most recent one I did, I wanted to make sure I didn't repeat anything, was at the beginning of the year, I did the worst of the year. So no repeats in that, but if you want to find out some more dirt on products I thought weren't very great, I'll link that video down below for you to watch after this one because that is always so fun. It's just fun to talk trash about things. <laughs> I just feel like there's so many products I try that I end up really liking and that can get a little overwhelming to be constantly bombarded with like, hey, these are all really good products. So it's fun to take a step back and be like, but what is not very good? Because those certainly exist as well. So that's what we're doing today. And yeah, strap in. We've got a lot of things. I couldn't believe how many things. I have a little bin in my... Uh, closet here that I have a label that just says bad bin on a post-it. I need to, I have a label maker. I need to like actually make a label for it. So let's dive in. Let's start with, mm, I have so many makeup products. Let's start with one that every time I kept retrying it, I thought for sure this time I'm going to like it. Cause I feel like I've heard other people like it. It's the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Bronzer. There is something going on with this that no matter what I do, I cannot get this to look good on my skin. And it's very weird because the texture of it feels nice. That color, are you kidding me, is perfect for my skin tone. This should be perfect for me and I cannot get it to work. And it keeps getting hard pan and so I've scraped that off. It's such a bummer. If you have this and you've made it work, what brush are you using? Because I've tried it with like denser brushes, fluffier brushes and everything in between and I can't make it work and it's the perfect tone for me. I feel like a lot of the bronzers I've been trying lately are just not the right tone. So every time I use them, I'm like, eh, this one is the right tone, but there's something about the formula that just doesn't work. I don't know, let me know. I feel like I can't get it to show up so that I'm like, well, maybe it's because again, it's lighter, but I'm like, but I don't like it enough to buy another shade to see, but anyway. Round and around, I have gone with this product. I think I've just decided, I guess I just don't like it. By the way, I have the shade Light, if you were curious. And you know, that's a brand. There's a lot from that brand I've really liked, but not the bronzer. We have two Charlotte Tilbury products that I think are not great. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> a little tea, because you know I love a lot of Charlotte Tilbury products. Let's start with this one. This is the Cream Shadow. You guys know I love their Cream Shadow formula. This one's in the Pillow Talk shade. And when I see this swatched, it looks absolutely stunning and glimmery, like exactly what I want. This color looks nothing like the swatches. So I love this like whipped texture that it has, but this is not what you see swatched online. This is just like this kind of flat, maybe satiny look. And when I blend it onto my eyes, it just kind of looks dull and I don't know. I expected this to be a lot more shimmery a la the other ones from this line that I've tried that are beautiful. They have like this satin shimmer. This is just satin with really not much shimmer. So I was just disappointed. I feel like with this color, especially with the Pillow Talk name, like everything that they name Pillow Talk, I feel like is usually really good and right up my alley. And this is just, it just misses the mark. So it was very disappointing, not cheap. If you are wanting an amazing cream shadow in this line, I love the shade Oyster Pearl. Used to be called Marie Antoinette. That one is beautiful. So I would avoid the Pillow Talk one. All right, the other Charlotte Tilbury product I was very disappointed in is the Unisex Healthy Glow. So it says it's an all year hydrating summer tint moisturizer. This is so dark if you're anywhere near my skin tone. So it's supposed to be universal and anyone can use it. It comes out white, right? And so I'm sure the idea is that the pigments kind of, you know, pop, if you will. That sounds gross, but. Um, and then it turns into a color that's supposed to be for your skin tone. Except for this turns so orange on me. You have to be like that exact skin tone to make this work. And so for me, I used it. <laughs> And I literally had a mask and I was like trying to blend it down. So then there was like this jagged line. I'm like, I guess I just have to go all the way down to my toes with this. So the only thing I could think of that might be really nice is if you use this like for your body. Like if you were not wanting to actually self tan, but you wanted to put a little bit here, maybe on your arms, maybe. But this is expensive to use that way because it's not like it's a full size thing. So if you were using it all over your body, you would go through it pretty quickly. So I don't know. It's a pretty finish to it, which is such a shame. 
but it is a very specific tone that it turns to and maybe it just turns to that on me but i have a feeling it's not so i know this works for some people but it really does not it's not universal i guess that's my point so want to bring that up if you've seen this and you've been like ooh, no <laughs> Just avoid. I feel like my skin looks extra pale, speaking of that today. Can't decide if it's just like this tone of orange. By the way, I went through my closet, you guys. I did vlog some of it, so you'll see that soon or it's already up, etc. I'll link below. I got rid of like 80% of my clothes. Like so many bags were donated and I feel so good about it because some of them were things I was holding on to from like way before I ever had kids and I was where A, the styles were different that I don't even wear a lot of the style of it. B, they just don't fit me and honestly, even when, I, like my goal weight is not the weight that I was before. I have a very different, what I think healthy goal weight and that's not it. Like that, I was just so much smaller and anyway, that's not, that's not the reason I'm talking about it. The reason I'm talking about it is this is one of the few shirts that made the cut because I just think it's so unique, but I'm not totally sold that this color is a good color for me. So just bear with me here. <laughs> but it's such a good feeling, man, to declutter your stuff. Oh, I love that. This was one of the most disappointing launches. I love the packaging. These are the Kosas 10 second eyeshadows. I think the packaging, 10 out of 10. I just think it's cute. I love this color purple. It's one of my favorite colors. The formula is wrong. So I want to swatch these next to you. So I have the old formula. Now in fairness, this formula is not quite the same. I've brought it up before, but I flew with it. And I'm telling you something with the pressure in the air changed this formula. And maybe that's why they reformulated it. But this is incredible. Like you could put it on your eye. Oh my gosh. And then it would blend so beautifully as just a one shadow eye look. Oh my gosh. So they reformulated it a bit. And I was so excited to try them. I'm trying to think which would be the closest to this. I'm gonna try, I think this shade would be closest to the globe shade. This is the shade Blaze in the new formula. And it looks really pretty. It's not an exact, but it's close. But there's something about this that just blends away so much more than the original one did. I feel like I'm not doing it justice. It's hard to show, but like this one would keep that sheen while you blended. This one still has a little bit of the sheen, but it just always looks patchy on my eyes when I do it. The original doesn't do that. So I'm like, Kosas, please go back to the old formula. I won't fly with it, I swear. <laughs> so very disappointing. I'm just gonna keep my original one and use it from time to time and probably declutter these because it's so disappointing. <laughs> it was like my favorite. So this is a more recent disappointment. This is the Maybelline Superstay Active Wear Concealer. This just doesn't look good on the under eyes. There are so many concealers out there that look really, really nice. This is not one of them. And it's interesting that it says 30 hour wear. I feel like the second I blend it in, it already looks not great and it doesn't wear well. Like it catches into every fine line. It looks a little bit patchy. So I always feel like when I've done it, I'm like, ooh, I need like a coverage powder on top of it to make up for what this is exposing. Does that make sense? So it's not a great one I would avoid. It's a new launch, so it's always exciting, but this is not one that is worth your money. It is just not. This is one I've heard touted so much on YouTube and I really wanna love it, but there's something about it that just doesn't work for me. This is the Merit Little Cheek Color in the shade Cheeky. Maybe part of it is the color for me, but this is not easy to work with. I've not found that this blends well onto my skin and I feel like once I blend it on, it removes the makeup underneath and I use a lot of cream and liquid cheek products. So I'm not new to this and the other ones I love don't lift up the makeup underneath. This one just does. So I don't know. I find it harder to work with. If you use it in a very specific way, please let me know because I would rather make this work. It wasn't cheap to buy. I really, really love the Merit Signature Lipstick. I want freaking every shade. It is so freaking beautiful. The shade I own is Slip and it is gorgeous. Perfect nude, mm. but this I'm not a fan of. So if you like maybe a, no, I just, I can't even recommend it to anyone. I just don't think it's great. On the same vein, this is the last time I'm gonna talk about this because this may be a repeat. I don't know. I don't know why I still have it. <laughs> it's the Beauty Blender Bounce Liquid Cream Blush. Terrible, dry, really looks patchy on the skin. Like the Merit one is better than this one. This one is not good. I haven't really heard anyone talk about it, probably for good reason. It's just not a good formula. It's a little bit too dry, a little bit patchy. Mm -mm. Avoid, avoid. I'm finally gonna declutter it, I promise. Like I said, I don't know why I still have that, honestly. I thought about getting ready today using these products, but I was like, I don't want to. <laughs> I just don't want to. We ordered 
food delivery for lunch we're gonna have after I'm done filming and I'm so excited. There's something about like getting lunch delivered for some reason, like even when I was teaching, that was like the best day. You were in the best mood if you knew like, ooh, we ordered food in, like the whole team, we're gonna eat it together. Doesn't that just put you in the best mood? Cause it puts me in a great mood even still. So we are gonna watch like an episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which we are re-watching by the way. That show is so good. We're gonna eat our lunch and I'm so freaking excited. Anyways, that's why I'm in a good mood. Mood. Can I share something I'm just loving right now, even though this is a, this was in my book bag and for like three days I couldn't find it. And I, it's a new product to me, the Physician's Formula Blush in Pink Sands. This is my new favorite blush. It just, it's so freaking pretty. It blends so beautifully, especially if you have skin like mine. Highly recommend, it's so pretty. All right, here was one TikTok viral product that I was like, mm. and so I tried it. And I was like, mm. it's the Maybelline Sky High Mascara. I know some of you guys love this. And everyone, especially mascara, we have certain, can I even open it? What's going on? What is happening? I think the like stopper just popped out. Yeah, it was stuck and the stopper popped out. So now it's all wet. So I can't even like use it right now. But before the stopper was actually in it. This just made my lashes look longer for sure but very, very like thin. And like they they just, it didn't look good on my lashes. I like more volume and curling. I didn't find this to be super curling. It definitely wasn't volumizing. I feel like my lashes looked longer, but very sparse and it dried quickly. I think because this may be a tubing formula, which I typically like, but not in the way this did it. I just wasn't a fan. So this is one I have no desire to try again. And now I can't even try again because I broke it. My favorite is still the Essence, say it with me, Volume Stylist Lash Extension Mascara. That's like six bucks. It's my favorite. I need to buy one to have here because I'm missing it. <laughs> Another mascara I wasn't a fan of, I think I just talked about in my current favorites video. I mentioned a few fails in that and this is one, so I'll go quickly. It's the L'Oreal Voluminous Noir Balm. It was just underwhelming. Again, not super volumizing. I've even let it dry out a few weeks and I still still wasn't a fan and it makes me sad because I think this packaging is really pretty. <laughs> and I mentioned that video, I'm trying to be pickier about mascara because I can be pleased pretty quickly if as long as it's curling and volumizing. So I'm trying to be pickier about like, I really just don't think those two are good. This Milk Kush Liquid Eyeliner was so dry. I hesitated to bring it up. It's like almost chunky because I'm like, well maybe there's something like this batch was weird but this is not normal. I love liquid liner. I use one nearly every day. And the one I'm wearing today is really good. It's from Sephora, like their brand. So it's around $10. It's their fine line felt liner and it's super fine. And I, it's so freaking easy to use. I have a feeling though, I've only been using this for a little while and it's already starting to dry out. So I think this is something you'll have to replace a lot, but it's really, really good. Anyway, this one, super dry right off the bat, almost chunky, just weird. If you have this and yours is not like that, please let me know because I wanna know, is it the product or is it just this like, I got a weird batch? I didn't buy that one. That one was sent to me in PR. I don't know, but it, I was not a fan. <laughs> Speaking of dry and weird, the Revlon Colorstay Micro. I love a really fine tip liner because I just feel like you can really get in there if you just want a thin line and then mascara just to darken the band. This was so kind of weird. You see that? There we go. It's just like kind of dry, not cr as pigmented as I would want. This one in fairness is a brown, but it's a dark brown. Let me see. Okay, no, it's just called brown. I just pictured it being a little bit deeper. There we go. You can build it up a little bit, but it's hard when it's this thin and you're doing it on your lash line to build it up and go back and forth because it is so pointed. So it's one of those that's uncomfortable to use. If you're gonna do a really thin liner, it has to be creamy because you're just scratching otherwise at your eye. You know what I mean? The Hourglass 1.5 millimeter is still the best thin one I've ever found because it is creamy and you can glide it on. However, it's expensive for what it is and you go through it like that because it is creamy. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, but yeah. This is a product I enjoyed a bit when I first tried it in a like trying new elf makeup video, but it's their lip stain. There's something about this formula that the color changes once it's on your lips. Like after about 20 minutes, it doesn't look like the color you swatched or that you put on. And I don't like that. <laughs> I want to know what to expect. Look how freaking pretty. I love this color it's called Power Mauve. It looks a little more peachy to me, but it ends up looking just like, kind of like your lips, but a little bit darker as the stain. And I just don't like that. The stains I like, L'Oreal makes one I think is beautiful and it stays glossy. I do think this stays a little bit glossy, but it's just not as good as that one. And the L'Oreal one's right around the same price. 
So for that reason, I'm just like, mm, I don't trust it. I don't trust the color I put on. Like it doesn't stay like that and I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> but it does stain. Like I just wipe that with makeup wipe and it's still there. So, you know, it works, it does its job. It just, you never know what color you're gonna end up with. Speaking of e.l.f., this is one I've changed my mind on and I always feel like I need to mention it more because I raved about it in the past and it makes me feel bad because I've changed my mind the more I used it. This is the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. I freaking love the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation. I have it right here. I have to resist using this every single day because it is maybe the best powder foundation I've ever used. And I don't say that lightly because I'm a big powder foundation person. This makes your skin look so blurred and so perfect. You really don't need a foundation under it. You really don't. I didn't use it today. I used the Huda Beauty Glowish Powder Foundation, which I also love. The e.l.f. one is way more mattifying and way more coverage. Anyway, so that from the camo line, two thumbs up. This one I initially liked because it looks really pretty when you put it on and it's got very high coverage. I'm sure this was meant to dupe the It Cosmetics CC Cream that's got very similar packaging also has high coverage. It's been around for a long time. This one, what I realized is it starts to break up after only a few hours of wearing it. And then by the end of the night, my skin just looks awful. Like the pores are on my nose. Like it was very noticeable once I really started paying attention to it, but I was so starry eyed by how it looked when I first applied it. And then by the end of the night, I wouldn't look closely at myself in the mirror. I would just go in and wash my face. Like I said, once I started paying attention, I was like, Ooh, so that's why I have not used this in a long time and I'll probably declutter this and I have a couple shades from my collection because it's just disappointing. I'm sure I could make it work better for me by doing powder foundation, using a setting, doing all those things, but the reality is I have other foundations that last better without having to do all that, so it's just not worth the effort, you know? If you wanna go through that effort or you're someone that always uses like loose powder and all that, then you might actually like it. It might stay better for you. This is brief. Milani Keep It Full Max 66666. <laughs> this burns like the Fenty Gloss Heat does. Some people don't mind it. it, feels like a cinnamon burn. I do mind it, so I just wanted to mention it before I declutter it for good because it really burns. I like a plump. This is the lip stuff I'm wearing. I'm not sure, I don't know that I love, I like the way like it looks, but I think it's just a little deeper than I typically go. But I'm wearing the NYX Slide On Lip Liner in Need Me, which it turns deeper as it sets on your skin. And by skin, I mean lips, lip skin. Why is that the second time I've said that in a video? But I topped it with the NYX Filler Instinct Gloss in Sparkling Please, which made it really glossy and pretty. So it was a nice combo, but it's just a very specific look that I don't know that I love. This has a slight plumping feeling, but it's very light and it's not that kind of cinnamon burn. So that's why I am getting rid of it. I'm not a fan, but I know some people really like it. And it probably really does plump, you know? Couple other unfavorites, the La Roche-Posay. This is such a specific product. I love so much from this brand, but this Anthelios HA Mineral Sunscreen gives you the whitest white cast you've ever seen. You can't get rid of it, unbelievable. And I love a lot of sunscreens from this brand, but this one in particular, I was not a fan of, so I just figured I'd mention it. It's just, Mm-mm, mm-mm, it's gotta go. <laughs> and then this one I did mention in my faves and fails last month. This is the Verb Dry Shampoo. Supposedly I learned it's for dark hair. The reason this is an unfavor is because it gives the worst white cast and you ca I cannot get it out of my dark hair. And when I discovered in that video that it's supposed to be for dark hair, I was like, what? <laughs> So it gives off, like when you spray it, it's brown, but it changes in your hair and it's awful. So I would definitely avoid that dry shampoo. Okay, I think that's everything I had to mention today. I just like doing this from time to time, like I said, because I do like a lot of products. There's makeup brands, especially drugstore makeup brands are killing it and there's so much good out there that it's almost more rare to find things that don't work, which is amazing. I feel like 10 or 15 years ago, it was, like a 50-50 shot. Like it was a 50% chance that you were gonna buy something and be disappointed by it. But nowadays it's like 90% of the things you try are really good, you know? So, which is great. We live in an awesome time for that. But yeah, it's, it's almost fun to find products that suck. Only for me because this is what I do, not in general life. Like obviously it sucks when you spend your own money and it's a waste. Okay, anyway. I'm so weird. So I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, and this is like maybe one of the first videos you're seeing of mine. Hi, I'm Jessica, welcome in. I do makeup videos all the time. I talk about 
all kinds of makeup. I do drugstore dupes. I also do vlogs. I've got two little girls. I just had a baby very recently. And so that's a big part of my life. So I'd love if you subscribed and joined our little family and catch more of my videos. Of course, I'll link some of the ones I mentioned down below and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.